Komodo begins taking orders for select Asian markets. Marvel Snap now supports the deck. Two new versions of Proton land with major improvements and several Steam Deck beta clients hit. All of this and more in this week's Steam Deck news. All right, the first thing I wanna talk about today is that it appears Komodo has started sending out confirmation emails to folks who have reserved their Steam Deck in Japan, Hong Kong, South Korea, and Taiwan. The Komodo reservation process works the same way it did for other customers around the world. You pay to reserve your spot in line, and when your turn comes, you get an email invitation to complete your purchase, and you have a 72 hour grace period to do so. Well, it appears that they've actually started sending out email purchase invitations. They're actually starting to ship the Steam Deck December 17th, and so I'm really excited for my Asian friends who are about to get their hands on the Steam Deck for the first time. I hope you guys are even more pumped than I am. But this does raise the question, once Komodo starts shipping the Steam Deck to these regions, which countries are next to get the blessing of the Steam Deck? Light up the comments with your answers, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Next up, Proton 7.0-5 has landed, and it's a pretty awesome release. This version adds support for Rift, Unravel 2, Revolt, Indiana Jones and the Emperor Tomb, Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition, which I'm really excited about, and nine other titles. It also includes fixes for Batman Arkham City, Spider-Man Remastered, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Return to Monkey Island, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, Grand Theft Auto V, Red Dead Redemption 2, and many other titles. There's also a new Proton Experimental here. There are 14 new games which are officially supported, including Pirate Warriors 4, Outriders, Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection, Persona 5 Royal, and many others. It has a host of fixes for other games and launches as well. One significant fix is for the EA Desktop app. Now, the new EA app is notorious for breaking compatibility with EA games, which were working on the Steam Deck before EA rolled out their new app and broke things. According to the changelog for this experimental version of Proton, Valve has fixed the EA launcher displaying a blank window, and they've also fixed EA launcher flickering on deck in handheld mode. Other fixes include Halo Infinite crashes and several games displaying the wrong language for their intro movies. Before we continue, I need to say thank you to this video's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from brands you may or may not have heard of. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel any time. As a small business owner, I love that Bespoke Post purchases 90% of their products from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. Every month, Bespoke Post introduces their members to great new products like outdoor gear, barware, home goods, clothes, and even more. Each box of awesome has about $70 worth of goods, but it only costs you a fraction of that price. And what's even better is that your boxes will be based on your answers to the preference quiz, so you get what you actually want. You also get a preview of your box before it ships, so you can keep it, swap it for another box that suits your fancy, or skip the whole month for free. That way you only pay for what you want. I personally was interested in the Forge box, which features the Mini Hunter Damascus Steel Knife, as well as the Weekender box, which comes with a durable Weekender bag that's great for traveling. To get 20% off your first box of awesome, click the link in the description and enter the code GARDENER20 at checkout, or go to bespokepost.com slash GARDENER20, and thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. I wanna take a second and circle back to a story that we talked about in the last uh, deck news video. In that previous video, we talked about reports that JSOX may have leaked or sold customer email addresses. And in that video, we also talked about how JSOX denies those allegations. Well, I've actually got a statement from their team on that story here. Now, I won't read the whole thing, but only the relevant parts. Responding to one of the statements I made in the video, quote, you misunderstand our privacy policy. Our privacy policy mentions that we share customer information with advertising partners. Here, the advertising partners refer to Facebook and Google and Spotify, and our privacy policy mentions this in the advertising section. So there is no problem with our privacy policy. And that's right, in, in my last video, I said that their privacy policy allowed them to sell customer data. My bad. Quote, we can assure you we value our customers' privacy and have never and will never share or trade our databases with their personal details. Having said that, we have checked all our systems to make sure they haven't had any breaches, attacks, leaks, or any other security issues. We take privacy very seriously, so we are investigating these claims and we haven't found a single piece of evidence so far. We have asked for proof, but unfortunately nobody sent anything other than hearsay and speculation. 
So until other information comes out, uh, it appears that uh, we're kind of at an impasse with this story. JSOX vehemently denies uh, selling customer data or leaking or having a data breach. So until something more comes out, this story is pretty much over, I think. Next up, Marvel Snap. Admittedly, I hadn't heard anything about Marvel Snap until I tuned into the Game Awards. But since then, I feel like I've seen Marvel Snap literally everywhere. Well, now we come to find out that the latest release of Proton Experimental can actually allow Marvel Snap to connect to its online services on the Steam Deck. Now, if you haven't heard of Marvel Snap, it's a free-to-play card battling game in the Marvel Universe. It's not really my cup of tea, but again, I've suddenly seen it everywhere, so maybe you'll want to give it a try. To get it working, open up the game's library page, uh, open the game's properties, and switch to the compatibility tab, and then check the force the use of a specific Steam Play compatibility tool option. From there, select Proton Experimental and you should be good to go. Now, some folks are saying that you may need to switch to desktop mode in order to log into your Google account, but I was able to do it without any issues, so your mileage may vary on that. Either way, once you're logged in, you can play from gaming mode because you're not gonna need to log in again. Now, I gotta ask you though, if you're enjoying this video, why haven't you liked that smash button yet? Just give it a gentle tap and you're on your way to more Steam Deck content. Double points if you subscribe. Now, once we get to 100,000 subscribers, I'm gonna be giving away a Steam Deck. We're so close, so make sure that you get subscribed so that you don't miss the details on how you can win. And thanks. So the new Halo Master Chief Collection Workshop update reportedly works great with the Steam Deck. This according to Reddit user Chief117. The new Halo update includes features like match rejoining, uh, Steam Workshop integration, mod plug and play, uh, campaign collectibles in Halo CE and Halo 4, uh, acrophobia and bandana skulls in Halo 4, uh, retroactive Spartan points and more. Now, the Steam Workshop integration here is really cool. This will allow you to download mods for the game or subscribe to them to use uh, Steam's parlance. And then you launch the game into EAC bypass mode. You can't use mods and use Easy Any Cheat at the same time, but that's kind of to be expected. This lets you play Halo mods on Steam with ease. It's really awesome to see official mod support for Halo Master Chief Collection and to see that Steam Workshop is integrated here. Mods are the spirit of PC gaming and I just love this. Have you made a mod for Master Chief Collection? Leave a comment and let me know. Uh, are you gonna be playing it on your Steam Deck? I'm excited to hear from you. Next up, Sabrent has revealed their new 2230 NVMEs. This is great news for folks who wanna update their deck with a larger drive capacity. Testing shows that it's competitive with the drives that Valve provides with the Steam Deck. The issue is though, Sabrent haven't released pricing for the new drives, which come in uh, 256 gig, 512 gig, and one terabyte models. Will they cost an arm and a leg? My guess is they will, but will people buy them? Yes, yes they will. Even though Valve has consistently uh, cautioned against opening up your deck if you don't know what you're doing. The Game Awards were this week and I was very excited for it, mostly because of how Valve was approaching it. They were giving away one 512 gigabyte Steam Deck every minute during the Game Awards. That's really cool, I thought. Uh, but why would they be doing that if they didn't have some reason they wanted people to tune in and watch the Game Awards? Well, spoiler alert, they didn't announce Half-Life 3 and they didn't announce Neon Prime. They didn't announce anything. In fact, uh, I was quite disappointed. But we did get this excellent video from Fan the Deck about the Game Awards that wrapped up the whole event. So go check that out because he did a better job than I ever could have. In total, Valve gave away over 170 decks during the event, and that's really nice of them. Uh, if you're one of the winners, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Finally, as is tradition around these parts, we take a look at the Steam Deck client releases. This week, there were a raft of new beta clients. On December 4th, they pushed a fix for the Steam Store's payment method pop-up windows, which stopped working in a previous beta release. Then on December 8th, they released a new beta client with uh, several changes and fixes. Further optimizations for load times with users with a large game library. They fixed a case where the UI would think that a game is running when it's not, leaving the game as in an exiting forever state. And they fixed a case where disconnecting a controller while navigating would not cancel repeating movements. In desktop mode, they also replaced launch option dialog with the new UI that includes a checkbox to remember the user's decision. Uh, they added a drop down in game properties to change that selection after it's remembered. They fixed intermittent browser crash when loading update news dialog. 
They fixed a rare crash when exiting new big picture mode, and they made it so that you can use the new big picture mode standalone keyboard if Steam is configured to run in new big picture mode. Finally, on December 9th, they pushed another release which fixed the new big picture mode overlay being incorrectly sized when scaling was set to anything other than 100%. And they also fixed cropping DLC for game details when hovering over items. So that's it for the updates. That's it for the news this week. I'd love to know what you think. How is Valve doing with their updates for the Steam Deck? Do you like the pace of their innovations here? Leave me a comment and let me know. What do you think about any of the other stories that we talked about in this video? I'd love to hear from you. I want to give a shout out to my friends on Patreon and my YouTube members who make what I do here possible. It's because of these fine folks that I've been able to grow the show into what it is today. If you believe in the work that I'm doing, you can support the show with the links below. And thanks. That's going to do it for this video, though. I hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you next time.